Hello everyone, CMPX here, and today we are going to be looking at the NVIDIA GTX 760 and how well it can hold up in games in 2020. This card is built on the GK104 architecture and has 1152 CUDA cores, 96 texture units, 980 MHz core clock with a 1033 MHz boost clock, 2GB of GDDR5 RAM, 256-bit memory bus, and a 170W TDP. This card is around 7 years old and it was released in June 2013. Overall it's not a bad card though, although it did get a bit noisy at times during my benchmark test. I don't know whether that was just this specific card or it happens to like all GTX 760s. With a launch price of $249, roughly £210, the GTX 760 by Nvidia compared to the previous products and AMD's current lineup, which is actually more expensive than the GTX 760, it performed better overall. With the AMD Radeon HD 7950 with a price of $300 or £240, did struggle to get sales after the NVIDIA GTX 760 was released due to the NVIDIA having much better performance and being a cheaper graphic card as well. So it's a no-brainer really, which one are you going to buy? Well, which one would you have bought? Overall, I never had no issues with this card during the benchmark tests, although for some reason I couldn't use my DisplayPort wire so I had to go into the living room and steal the HDMI off my Xbox to use with the GTX card. Starting the benchmarks off in GTA 5 which is really good optimization to run on both good hardware and lower end hardware as well. Here you can see I'm running the game at 144p with a mixture of low and normal settings but mostly targeted that sort of normal setting area. And the game held up great with 52 average FPS and 37 0.1% lows. And the game played really nicely as well and I couldn't feel any stutter. Assassin's Creed Odyssey didn't run as well as GTA but still it was playable at 1600 times 900 resolution and mostly low settings and we managed to reach a whopping average FPS of 43 and 0.1% lows of 36. Being honest, the game doesn't look that terrible in lower settings, but personally I would rather play it on console and have it look a little bit better. Maybe you could target 30 FPS instead and maybe make it look a little bit better but lose some of them frames. Warzone with low settings on at 1080p was just about playable but looked absolutely awful. With an average FPS of 43 and 0.1% lows of 7, the game did feel a bit buggy when I was playing as well. Personally, if you're more of a competitive player and you're thinking about downloading Warzone, I would consider an upgrade for your GPU. I mean, you can find cards at a reasonable price now that will run Warzone completely fine. You can get AMD GPUs like an RX 570, should do fine running Warzone, and you can get one for under £100 or maybe $130 or something like that. It's not expensive for the power of the card, it should do fine running any eSport title. The next game in the lineup is Red Dead Redemption 2, which is running in the lowest possible settings and the lowest possible resolution with 1440 times 900 and the results just came in with an average FPS of 21 and 0.1% lows of 19. Personally, I wouldn't call this playable and I have seen flipbooks with better FPS or shall I say pages per second than this. Being honest though, I think the card actually handled this game really well being Red Dead Redemption 2 is a modern, high quality AAA title and this card came out in like 2013, so it's almost 10 years old. Next up we have the Outer Worlds. The Outer Worlds running at 1080p with medium settings and the game played really well on this hardware. The Outer Worlds might not look it, but for some of these older cards it can be quite a demanding title, but it was no problem here for the GTX 760. For some reason, as you can see, MSI Afterburner didn't want to benchmark this title, probably just hates me or something, but yeah, it didn't want to benchmark it, but the FPS stayed between 40 and 60 most of the time anyways, and the game didn't start when I was playing it, so there's no worries at all. If you want to play the Outer Worlds yourself, you can actually get it on the Xbox Game Pass for PC. 
obviously, and it's it's quite a good game to be honest. I, I really enjoy it. It's a bit like another version of Fallout, something like that. And for the last game we are going to be testing today, which is Halo MCC Reach of course, the game ran at an average of 5 FPS and was completely unplayable. Nah, I'm only joking of course, the game ran flawlessly in 40, 1440p and enhanced graphics switched on, with an average FPS of 75 and apparently 0.1% loads of zero. I couldn't feel any static when playing the game so I know something tells me Afterburner is lying to me again. I'll be having words with him later though so don't you worry about that. Okay everyone, so when I was doing heavier sort of gaming on this GPU, like Red Dead Redemption 2 and stuff, this is what the card began to sound like. Okay, so finishing up the video, should I get this card in 2020? Well, from my opinion, I would say if you can get the card cheap, like around 40 or 50 pounds, and the card is good enough to suit your needs, then yes, it's a good deal. But in most cases, it's probably worth just spending a bit more money and getting an RX 570 that will perform a lot better than this card, has a lot more updated drives as well. And so, it's entirely up to you. Depends if you can get the card cheap, but personally, I would spend a bit of extra money and get something a little bit better. But anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please slap a like on it. If you didn't, well, the other button works okay as well. Leave a comment and tell me what you think. I'm going to be doing a lot more benchmarking and stuff on this channel now as well. And so expect more content like this in the future and subscribe to stay updated with it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you in the next video.